Hello everyone, welcome back to Digit and today we have a very special visit for you in store with us here at Cashify. Now, in some point or the other, you might have considered buying a refurbished smartphone but might be skeptical about how it is refurbished. So, we are finally inside the Cashify facility and we have the man who is behind all of this, Mr. Mandeep, who is the co-founder and CEO of Cashify and he'll be taking us through the entire refurbishment process of a smartphone here at Cashify. So, let's get started. Good to have you here, Satwit. Thank you. Let's show you around. So Satvik, thanks for coming by. I think yeah. what you're seeing here is one of the largest uh, smartphone refurbishing facility in India. But what I'll show you today, Satvik, is the end-to-end -end process of how we collect devices, where do they come, what happens to those devices and how do they flow from receiving to actually refurbishing and going to the customer's hands. So what you'll see here is this is actually the collection point of all the phones that we collect from across the country. Okay. Okay. So you could find phones that we collect from customers home or from the storefronts or say some brand stores online trade-in program everything gets collected here okay now what happens here is you know when we receive the phones they either come through a courier partner or our own field force <laughs> right but the first step is we need to figure out that the quality parameters on which we picked up the phone at the doorstep and what we received here, do they match or not? The phone or a tablet or a laptop gets an identity here. Now the identity means a unique barcode. Hmm. So every device that comes in gets a unique barcode and which travels with it through its journey in this facility. Is there any distinction between the devices say that are coming from a trade-in program or a consumer? Are they treated differently or, no. or is it the same across? They're all treated exactly the same. You know, none of these guys yeah. have any different testing parameters. They, for them, it is the same parameter that they'll have to test the device on. Okay. Because everything is, you know, logged in the system. Then on the back end, there are system logics which will then define, say for example, if a phone is coming from a trade-in program, mm -hmm. what are the parameters that the system has to then send to the trade-in partner. Okay. In case there is some disparity. Yeah. But for them, every device is the same. You would also see that every station has, you know, a camera attached to it. So every phone that gets opened, there is a video which is available, okay. which is tagged to the barcode of the phone. So in future, if you need to see that, you know, if you are raising a claim on some delivery agent, for instance, we can go back and track and find a video proof of the same device so that every detail is captured and nothing is mixed. I would like to know your insight on what percentages of uh, foldables are coming in because that is a market that has been expanding over the last few years. So is there an increased influx of foldables that you're seeing or people are holding on to them and uh, not selling them across? See honestly, it's a, it's a very new phenomena for folds. So we don't see a huge number, but in the last two years we've started seeing. The number is not like very high. I would say the number of folds in our overall mix is less than 2%. Yeah. Okay, so that's a very small number. But we do believe that as the market expands, that will, you know, become larger. But that also poses a challenge for us because all the testing protocols that we've built hmm. and the automation that we've built on testing is currently on a single slab phone, yeah. not on Fold. Yeah. So slowly we are also you know, changing our testing methodology to incorporate uh, the same. Every phone that comes in is in a different packaging protocol, for instance. Hmm. This is the protocol that we follow. When we receive material from Amazon, it comes in a different packaging material. So every, you know, uh, uh, Every source has a different packaging protocol as well. Okay. And you would see that, you know, the laptops that come in, they come in this kind of uh, nature. So this makes it very robust for the laptop, you know, while we handle it in courier. Okay. Okay. And this is something that, you know, this packaging material is we created about seven, eight years ago. There was nothing available like this. Okay. Okay. Mostly in India, this material was used to, you know, bring in wine bottles from different parts of the world so that they don't break or printer cartridges. Hmm. But we had to work with suppliers to create this in the size and format which would make it, you know, robust for laptops to travel. Okay. So a lot of things that we've done over the last eight, nine years are, you know, industry first. And we've created a lot of, you know, protocols and testing procedures and frameworks for this industry to grow. So it's not just smartphones that are coming in, right? What are the other categories? Because so Cashify we, is synonymous with smartphones. So, so we buy smartwatches, yeah. but that is largely focused on iWatch or Samsung watches because the after-sale market or second-hand market is there only for these two brands. Uh, we do a lot of uh, laptops, 
uh, we've recently you know uh, focused on tablets but they're also only samsung and i you know ipads or something that come in uh, yeah. in large numbers uh, what are the checks and checks and like tests that you do can you walk me through it sure sure sir yeah. so what you entered from is you know just a tunnel which makes sure that you don't carry any dust to this okay. facility so we are very critical about you know carrying dust because has the process has to be very very clean okay and you will you'll get to see why because we do a lot of uh, you know we open almost every phone so mm. dust is something that we are very critical about but i'll show you the process from where it starts right yeah. so once the phones are received and given the unique identity that you saw they come onto this floor and every phone goes through a testing process the before this you know the phone is properly charged and you saw that on the yeah. on the ground floor as well now once the phone is charged we upload an app so it's an in-house app which we call a diagnostic tool once that diagnostic tool is started the functional evaluation starts okay okay so you can see that he's testing for the speaker of the phone uh, he'll test for the microphone whether there's a volume that is going in or not he'll test whether the vibrator is working every possible check that can be you know incorporated is done on the station okay what do you do as a company to keep up with uh, all the changes and you know keeping your processes updated when it comes to testing smartphones because there are new processes like every time a new brand launches a new process there might be some change in the process sure. that might happen sure. so could you walk me through that so there is a robust r&d team which you know does not sit here it sits in our gurgaon office hmm. every time a phone is launched you know we change our testing protocol we you know include uh, another diagnostic step for instance here you can see we are testing for the screen's uh, touch calibration whether the screen is working or not uh, so all those things are very easy to do uh, satvik because yeah. there's not a lot that is changing in the phones honestly hmm. you know the camera qualities are changing but we need to test whether the camera is working or not and it's you know clicking images in the same protocol that is mentioned or not okay which is not very difficult yeah. and we have automated most of the stuff. for instance what you see here is a color chart which can evaluate whether the image taken is right or not so these guys just have to point the camera here hmm. take a picture and the software then will you know evaluate whether this a camera is working as per the specification or not this is the physical evaluation table so what you saw there was uh, functional conditions that we were testing now we also need to figure out how many scratches or dents are there in the phone yeah. right so with the human eye you can only evaluate as much the human eye can judge but we figured that if you could build a system where we can take 360 degree images of the phone and upload those images to a computer vision algo we will be able to evaluate the phone much more objectively yeah so what you see here is a small box and in this box you just place the phone and it automatically rotates on an axis and takes images from all the sides okay right so you can see that there's a phone which is gone inside and then there is a camera which is just taking pictures continuously hmm. and these images then go on on a cloud and then there is a output which tells the system how many scratches or dents are there in the phone okay and all this that you see here is built built in house in india okay right from the box to the software which goes inside to the algo that tests from computer vision how many scratches there everything is built in house in the company so is there anyone else in the world who has a similar like a uh, box to test or is it something that you guys so are as far as our, our understanding is nobody has a box which is mobile yeah. this small and can be taken to a customer's doorstep so do you plan to you know uh, like not just uh, keep it as a cashify product but you know say uh, build on it and help more uh, like you know service uh, service professionals in smaller towns with yeah. uh, these kind of boxes so is we there do. something that we do is in place yes we do but i think uh, first we have to make sure that what we have built yeah. works perfectly for us and then we have plans to you know uh, sell it to the outside world not just in india but across the world so now that we have seen what the quality checks happen and after uh, after all the evaluations that happen here at cashify which is step 1 and step 2 we are moving on to step 3 which is the actual repair of the device so yeah. mandeep can you just walk us through what all kinds of repairs that you do over here yeah. to ensure that customers are getting the uh, yeah. close to new feel when they are purchasing a smartphone yeah so you know there are you know severity of uh, defects that are there in the phone which we evaluate in our testing yeah. process Now for instance there are certain phones which only need cosmetic changes or which need part changes for instance the camera is not working yeah so this is the area where we make the changes in the phone which are very modular for instance we need to change the screen of the phone if it's broken right yeah. or if the camera is faulty we'll change the camera and then we repaste the phone and put it on a testing protocol okay 
then we also have phones where you know rather than changing the part mm -hmm. we have issues on the motherboard okay or we can repair the parts itself so that is what we call level 4 repair okay. now what you see here satvik is the station where the level 4 repair happens so you would see the 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 kind of machinery and the setup is more complex than what you saw on the other side watches for instance lately we've uh, you know built a cap capability on repairing smart watches which is a very small you know motherboard assembly but our team has been trained pretty well to handle these as well what all are the research and development steps that you guys take so for example is there a step where every phone every phone is taken apart at a preliminary level and the guide is built around it mm. or is it like a case to case basis where okay as if there is a severe change only then you guys are uh, introducing a new process in your repair so it's the latter yeah. we don't strip open every new phone that comes in because a lot of things in the phone are same if there is any technology which is completely new so we have a r&d team and a training uh, facility here in the in the in this building where you know uh, there are experts who first understand the change in the market and then train them in a classroom session once there is a theory session that complete that's completed we give them phones and get them to you know work on them uh, initially there are losses that we have to bear but then the team gets trained over a period of time So now with that out of the way, like with uh, L4 repairs yeah. done, uh, what is the next step in the process right. that a smartphone goes through? So the you know, from a very macro level, I've given you a picture that a phone, you know, once it has a defect, we change certain parts. But the most important part comes after that, which is the quality testing. Yeah. Now we test the phone three times in the journey of the phone, uh, once it is repaired. So every time a phone is repaired by a repair engineer, he keeps that phone with him for 24 hours. Okay so whatever changes that he's done whatever parts that he's replaced he will keep it for 24 hours and test it on his table once he's satisfied or he or she is satisfied that phone goes to a quality check room so when we have seen a smartphone you know being evaluated being tested and then being repaired hmm. now before shipping out to the consumers what is the next step we see warranty queues written on the board over here but yeah. what are the processes that you guys follow to ensure that a smartphone meets your standards and the consumers expectations before it is heading out Okay. So this is the area where we test the phone after it is repaired. Yeah. From the repair engineer's desk. This is not the area where we test it before dispatch. So there is another test that happens. So as I said, there are three times that we test a phone. Yeah. Once on the repair engineer's desk, once he's cleared it, it comes to here. Here every phone is retested and all the protocols. If these guys find any defect again, it goes back to the repair engineer's desk. Okay. Okay. Once these guys approve that okay the phone is working properly and they'll do the same checks that we do in the first instance do all the physical evaluation functional testing and make sure that the phone is you know in the perfect condition and we can give it to an end customer all that happens here once the test protocol and everything gets completed here then it goes on the second floor and it is stored okay okay now that is where a customer can place an order and once the order comes in the phone is again tested pre dispatch okay okay so this is the same process i had shown you you know initially every we run an application which tests the uh, functional condition and then we do physical evaluation of the phone the way we tested in the first step is there any process in place while after the phone is done being put back together that evaluates the where you evaluate the uh heat efficiency like thermal efficiency of the phone and stress test it to ensure that if say a power user is buying it mm -hmm. how would it cater to them in yeah, their so, real world use so what we do is uh, in some, you know in these stations we also run the phone on a high definition video for a stipulated amount of time okay okay what we test there is what is the battery efficiency because we have you know battery going you know the percentage of battery going down per minute for every phone so we have that data log with us so we test so we already you know we put an app run the hd video and see if the battery is degrading faster than expected if that is the case the phone back goes back again and a new battery is put in okay right on the heat dissipation we have certain you know uh, we have a machine where uh, it's not in this room it it's in the other room where yeah. we run the we run the test or we run the high definition video and keep the phone in that machine for say 6 uh, hour period okay and then every phone's temperature profile is uh, tested 
Yeah. And that gets logged onto the central database and then we are able to evaluate whether the phone is heating excessively or not. So now that we have seen how the phones come in, they are tested, they are repaired and after that how they are tested to ensure that they are in the best quality before they reach the hands of the consumers. Now this is the last step, this is the last step of QC which Mandeep will be taking us through before that is performed, before the, cons the, before the devices are shipped out into the storage area or to your home. So yeah. take it over Mandeep. Yeah, so the phones which get tested from the floor below, they are first put to the storage area and this is the area where this is called pre-dispatch QC. Okay. So once the order comes in, they pick out the phone from the storage and then they again test it on the same protocols that we tested on the, on the, the floor below. So is there a difference in handling and the final QC or the packaging of the devices from a foldable to a candy bar phone? No, there is okay. no difference. It's absolutely the same, it's just the size is different. Just in the testing, they have to make sure that the screen is tested thoroughly okay. because the screen size is larger. Apart from that, there is no major change. So this is, these are our packaging desks. Uh, the moment an order is created, a phone is put into these packaging boxes and then, you know, ready for uh, shipment. Every shipment happens under camera so that we have full proof of what we have packed, what's going out to the consumer and if there is any in transit damage, we have every proof that you know the phone was sent correctly, it was damaged in transit or not. Okay. So that's a simple packaging process that we have. So this is how a smartphone looks like after it has gone through all the processes which we saw in the video right now. Do not mind the fingerprints, or if iPhones are a fingerprint magnet, but yeah. So that brings us to the end of this tour, but before uh, leaving you Mandeep, I wanted to ask you a few questions about uh, what does it mean for you to run a company that has a refurbishing business in the country? And what is the message message for our viewers that you would like to uh, that that you would like to pass on to them to encourage them to buy more refurbished products? And what kind of a difference they can make while uh, working on a while working with a refurbished product? Sure. So I will uh, you know talk about two aspects of it. One, please sell your old devices. Don't store them in the drawers because it's very easy for us to stash the phones inside a drawer. These are valuable resources. Uh, every new phone that we manufacture, about 65 kilogram of CO2 is emission. So if we refurbish the phone and extend the life, you know, a lot of carbon dioxide could be avoided. The second thing is that it is the right thing for you to do. Uh, it's your money which is lying unused in the drawer. So we recommend people Whenever they are buying a new phone, either change the phone then and there through exchange programs or, you know, once you're getting used to the new phone and your old phone is lying, just give it to a company like ours. We'll make sure that your data is safe. We'll make sure, you know, it is properly refurbished and given a new life. And for people who want to buy refurbished phones, uh, we stand for quality. You've seen that, you know, it's not like we're just taking a phone, uh, reshining it and putting it in a box. We are making sure that we test each and every aspect of the phone, whether it's functional condition, physical, you know, aspect of the phone. And we make sure that as a consumer, you get six to 12 months of warranty. We have 182 service centers of our own that we run. So if you have any problem which you, you know, face while using a refurbished phone, you can go to any of the stores and get your phone repaired or, you know, get the service warranty. So all in all, you know, what we've created here is, is a brand that you can trust while you're buying, you know, a device which may not be new but an aspirational product which comes at 20, 30, 40% discount to what the new phone price would be. So it's good on your pocket, it's good for the environment and it'll make you happy. And that brings us to the end of this tour. I hope you like the video. Do not let, do not forget to let us know down in the comments below whether you will be buying a refurbished smartphone as your next device and if not, what are your thoughts on the refurbished smartphone market in India right now?